I mean, obviously at this time of year, I think what you're looking for from your team is um, improvement on a daily basis and, and execution and doing the little things. Um, first half, we were, I haven't watched the tape, but there were some things we did well. There were some things we did not do very well. Um, obviously in the second half, I think they had five or six points in the second half. So if you look at it from that standpoint, then the thought would be that we played better. But, you know, what I'm, you know, my emphasis is that we execute, that we compete, and that we play hard and not get casual, um, even in a game like that, which as a player um, can be hard. But we can still always maintain our concentration and our ability to sit down and defend and do the little things. And so, um, you know, this is it. This is the final tune-up. And now as we head into – uh, Plan X um, on the 13th. We've got to really um, ramp it up here, and we've got to get um, prepared and be ready to um, do all the little things. Because obviously they've got a terrific program, and we've we're trying to continue to get better as a group ourselves. Uh, where are you with injuries right now? Um, well, right now, um, obviously Logan and Zach and Ali Borns um, are out. Um, I'm not sure where they are. Uh, we may have them back here this week. So. I'm literally waiting on the trainers. There, um, Zach and uh, Ollie Borns have been working their way back. Ollie started doing a few things in practice. Uh, I think Zach is starting to do his here in the next couple of days. Um, and then Logan McLean, um, I think he just got a, got cleared from the doc from the uh, perspective of um, there's nothing structurally wrong um, with his ankle. He's been struggling with a, a high ankle sprain. That's, um, bone bruise and everything else. So I think um, we'll start getting him back here um, this week also. So um, as it pertains to those three, I'm still sort of day to day um, based on our training staff and our team doctors as to when exactly they'll be back. And I think it'll all depend on how well they do, um, particularly this week. Um, and, you know, so we'll see. I'm not sure who we'll have back or if we'll have any of them back. I don't know that yet. Would, would the return of any or all of those players have any impact on the lineup or rotation uh, that we saw tonight? Or um? those, those three have been out a long time. Um, Zach and Ali have been out most of the preseason, and Logan's been out probably the past uh, almost going on three weeks now. So, you know, when you look at that, I don't know if it will affect the rotation from the standpoint of one of those guys just coming right back in and starting or something. But, I mean, I think it will affect the rotation because, obviously, when they're back, it's going to provide depth. Um, so that's going to help us. And we've had to make some adjustments, particularly, as you saw tonight, as we got late in, in the point guard position. Um, we had Zach and uh, Ali, who were um, running most of the point when we started off behind Eric. And then once those guys went down, um, you've had Willie, we've had Aruna, and G has been doing some points. So we've had to make do um, with what we've done um, in practice and make adjustments. Uh, Gio, maybe from a your own perspective and then from a player's perspective, were there any particular things, goals, individual improvement goals that you laid out for yourself or that you think the players collectively wanted to come back this year and do? Uh, I think today we just wanted to come out and play with uh, a lot of energy, go out there and compete and just play together and be able to execute uh, some of the stuff we've been working on through in practice. And I think that since we really don't have a lot of depth right now, and uh, we just need a, we just need some players to get in there and get a, get a feel for the game and be able to execute some of the plays we uh, once we face these better better opponents coming up. Uh, Gio, from a leadership standpoint, how do you plan to uh, motivate the other guys night in and night out during the rest of the season? Uh, I think I got a, I think I, uh, I lead by um, example, but I also, also think I'm a vocal leader as well. So I think I got to uh, be able to communicate with the guys and, and also lead by example by bringing my energy uh, every night. And sometimes it's hard, but I know I got to bring it because we want to accomplish something here. And, and, and uh, I think we need a leader. And we have a, we have Eric, our point guard. And he's more of a um, he more of a lead by example guy. So I think I'm more of the voice guy. So. Hopefully we can come together as one and be able to lead our, you know, lead this team to something good. Gio, had you played against any of those guys before in high, high school or anything? Uh, I think I played against a few of them. I can't remember. I know, I know for sure I played against one number zero. Uh, I, I forget what school he went to. Went to one of the Cincinnati schools, but most of them, most of them are were familiar with with, uh, with who I was. But 
And I also knew their head coach. Coach, what kind of strengths do you think the uh, newcomers are bringing uh, to the program, and uh, what kind of adjustments are they uh, having to make along the way? Well, I think they, I think those guys have a pretty good feel um, for the game, uh, for the game of basketball and understanding and, and picking up things. They've actually picked up things pretty well. Uh, but certainly the adjustment is is that when you come into the situation and you're looking at really a veteran um, a veteran squad, we have probably moved along a little bit faster um, than we typically would just as far as the implementation of things. And when you have a veteran group, this group has an understanding of what we're looking for and everything else. And so what, so what you tend to do is, you know, the, the guys that haven't been here as long, you, you sort of place those expectations on that group and that they pick it up and keep moving. And, and sometimes it's probably not as fair um, to those guys. But, you know, having said that, that's why, you know, from, you know, you look at Giovanni and guys that are seniors, the key for them is always being solid in practice and doing things the right way because their example is the foundation for the new guys. So when the new guys watch them in practice and see them do things, that becomes their foundation because that's how they learn it, that's how they see it. And so that's why it's so important from a leadership standpoint to have the right example every day and have the right mindset. Uh, Coach Coop? Yes. Uh, despite the overall score, how do you think your team performed today and what do you need to work on? Oh, <laughs> we got a lot to work on, okay? Uh, let's put it that way. Um, you know, it's hard for me to tell. We were okay. Uh, we weren't. We weren't average at best, is what I would say. Now it's hard to really judge as far as you know. Once you get up to that level, the amount of points we were up and the execution and things like that. And obviously, one of the things that happens a lot of times in these exhibition games is when you look at the teams you play. It's not a typical team per se. You're not going to have guys that are going to be centers, forwards. A lot of times it may be five guards out there that are running around, five guys, you know, maybe 5'10 to 6'2". So it really can take you out of your element um, in many ways. And so that's that's the hard part from a coaching perspective and being able to evaluate, you know, you're ending up, you know, times down on the court where you've got L.J. Livingston on a 6'2 kid and he's having to guard him for the whole possession because that's their five man. And that's not typically what you have. And so um, we've got a lot of areas to get better in. I wasn't pleased with our free throw shooting, certainly in the first half. Um, we did pick it up and, and got better, but I, I, I was not pleased with that. Um, we need to get on the foul line more. I've got to do a better job of that. Um, I wasn't pleased with our turnovers. I thought we had too many turnovers against that group. Um, to have 15 turnovers I think is entirely too many. I would prefer that we were down to about six or seven um, against that team, so we've got to do better at that. Um, I think we've got to do a better job of getting loose balls and grabbing balls. Too many times balls are bumping around on the court or whatever, and we don't come up with possession. And I think that comes down to effort, and I think that comes down to want to. Um, so, you know, those are some things that we've got to do. And then we've got to do a better job in our half-court defense, and we've got to continually get better um, in that area also. Conversely, were, was, were there any specific areas you were looking for improvement from, say, the closed scrimmage to tonight, and did you see it? Well, one of, one of the things I talked about was our transition defense wasn't particularly good in the uh, closed scrimmage. Part of that can be attributed to me. I thought for the most part um, we improved in that area. Um, still looking for our execution to get much better. Um, but, you know, we, we, we still have some areas, you know, I, the turnover thing, I still think we had too many turnovers. I wanted to get better from that um, in the scrimmage. And then the other thing is I thought we played with um, I don't more energy in the scrimmage from the perspective of the guys being locked up into the game and, and being selfless and cheering for each other. Um, so I thought our energy was better. Um, I thought we were actually a little bit quiet on the court. And when you have the – you know, guys that have been through the program that we have, that should never happen. Um, you've got to, you know, a lot of times you got to provide your own energy, and I didn't think we did a great job of doing that. And, you know, granted, you know, there were times when, you know, guys were out of the game, and, and I do think it becomes a little bit tougher, you know, when Eric's out of the game as far as creating that energy. But, you know, as you saw, I saw him 
bang his toe or whatever. That was enough for me. I get him out. That's it. Didn't want to have any, you know, unnecessary injury. So I'm happy. One of the things I'm happy about is that we got through that game without having anyone get banged up. Deion Wade, he had uh, 15 points tonight, I guess, toward the end that looked like his uh, stroke was uh, was was getting there a little bit more so than at the beginning of the game. Can he be a scorer for you? And I, I guess he should be pretty familiar with the offense and everything by this point, right? Well, yeah, I mean, he's still learning because when you you have to understand Deion, Deion didn't practice hardly at all last year except maybe the last three weeks or somewhere like that, maybe the last month. So it's still a learning process for him. You know, the one thing about Dion is he brings terrific energy. You know, he's going to go to the boards. He's going to play hard. He's going to compete. I told him before the game, I'm not crazy about the fact that you break down our execution, but I love the fact that when you break it down, you break it down going 100 miles per hour so I can get the other part corrected because it's not about an energy level. I mean, you know, like Haruna's energy tonight was not very good, so he's got to get his energy better. You know, you can't be casual. You can't get caught up into the flow of the game or, you know, when you're playing against an opponent an opponent that, you know, maybe not as good as you, but you still have to be able to do the little things and, and be concentrated in your effort. He could probably be uh, an outside threat for you. Who? Oh. Uh, I didn't do a good job of answering that. Absolutely. Yeah, dion has got the ability to hop up and make shots, and plus he's got size for the for the position. You know, I always say it, it's just interesting. Some of the shots he takes that he gets off and gets a good look out of it is simply because he has size, and that's one of the things you like. He's got size and he's got length. You'd prefer he keep it under five fouls, though, right? Yeah, that did not shock me <laughs> that he got five fouls. And, and then he's got to take care, better care of the ball and make the simple play.